DTS Exchange is an enterprise-ready tool for migrating DTS packages to SSIS from SQL Server 2000 to SQL Server 2005 or 2008. In this demonstration, we're going to see how DTS Exchange can transfer your DTS packages to SSIS with virtually no manual labor. First, we'll open DTS Exchange and click the Migrate button. Here we can select the location of our DTS packages and the location of the newly created SSIS packages. Both locations can either be a folder location or on a server. We're going to select folder locations for both the source and the destination. We can also select the target platform. We are using SQL Server 2005 for this demonstration. The advanced options include metadata validation, creating an application log, and generating a migration history. We're going to leave all of these checked and then we click next. Here you'll see a list of all the DTS packages in the folder location we selected. We're going to select three DTS packages that will help demonstrate a conversion to SSIS. You can also click Save Report to save a text file list of all the DTS packages. Once we have selected the packages we want to migrate, we click Next. The most powerful feature of DTS Exchange is the elaborate rules that you are able to set up during conversion. This page will allow you to select the rules that will be applied to each of the converted packages we select. First is the deployment framework. This allows packages to refer to configuration files. Configuration files allow you to make changes to many packages from one location. For example, if you have all of your packages set to a server location for development and you need to change them when they are ready to move to production, adjusting the server name in the configuration file will update all the packages that are referring to that configuration file. To use this feature, we will leave the first radio button selected. In this text box below, we set the location where we want our configuration files to be created. The configuration files can be created with a single element or separate elements. We will select single element. Then we select the connection types for which we want the configuration files. We will leave all of these checked. The next feature is the conversion of child packages. If we have selected a DTS package that contains many child packages, then we want those child packages to be converted also. If we do not convert these child packages, then the parent package will fail most likely. We can select the location to transfer these child packages. Just like the parent, they can be saved on a server or a folder location. We will select the option to place them in the same location as the parent packages. Next is the auditing framework. This is the feature that will save you weeks of work and will make tracking your packages simple. The auditing framework creates a robust database of the history of your packages. It will store start times, end times, errors, warnings, row counts, and much more. This will allow you to report off the auditing database and track the trends and issues that occur in your packages. We have even included several reports that will show you all this data in a very easy to use format. Here we select the server we want to store the auditing framework. If this is the first time you run DTS Exchange on this server, then you can select the new option and it will allow you to create a database and the tables. SSIS Ops is the default database name. You can enter any name you would like. We're going to leave this set to SSIS Ops. On the first run, we'll need to create the tables also. This box will say found if the tables already exist. Below this, we can select the option to track row counts. We're going to leave all of these selected. We do not want the package to throw an error if it fails to track the row count. So we will leave this option unselected. The next feature is consolidated connections. This will take all of the connections that are identical and combine them into one connection. This will save you headaches in managing connections. At the top, we have the option to not consolidate flat file connections that are used as a source and a destination. Combining these can sometimes cause errors, so we will leave this selected. The second option will stop dynamic connections from being combined. We will leave this unselected. The next four options are options built into SSIS. We give you the ability to select them here during the migration process. Log into text. Login to SQL Server, checkpoints, and transactions are all SSIS features. We recommend reading Microsoft's documentation on these features before selecting these options. We will leave these unchecked for this demonstration. The next DTS feature is Null Handling. Null Handling builds into your data flow a check that changes any blank data to a true null. For example, if we receive a text file that has spaces in a location that we are trying to save in a date time field, it will cause our package to fail. Null handling will correct these issues for you. Code page options are advanced options. We're going to leave these unchecked for this demonstration. In handle unsupported data providers, we can select the option to check for 64-bit support if we are planning on running our SSIS packages in a 64-bit environment. 
We can select the option to automatically replace the SQL OLEDB with the SQL Native Client. SQL Native Client is a new provider which combines the OLEDB and ODBC interfaces in one library. SQL Native Client is a recommended provider if you are connecting to SQL Server 2005 or higher. If you are connecting to SQL Server 2008, then you must use the SQL Server Native Client instead of the SQL Server OLEDB. Under Data Flow Options, we can select the Truncation Row Disposition. We can select either Fail the Component, Ignore the Issue, or Redirect the Row. Under this, we can set the component for which we want to use the above settings. We can set a command timeout. Zero is infinite. We can select Delay Validation if we are in an environment where we are not connected to the source or destination. We can then select to validate against the external metadata. We will leave the data flow options unchecked. In other options, we can select the script language. In SQL Server 2005, VB.NET is the only option. In SQL Server 2008, C Sharp is also a choice. Under this, we see the package protection level. The default protection level is encrypt sensitive with user key. We can select encrypt sensitive with password or do not save sensitive if we want to change how the package is protected. We're going to uncheck other options, which will leave this at default. Now we'll click next. Here we'll see the packages we selected from the previous screen. You can change the migration title to give you a meaningful title in your migration history. We're now ready to start the migration of our packages to SSIS. We click Start Migration and we can see the progress bar at the bottom up here and tell us what step it is performing. We can also see the status of each package in the status column. We could have several different results appear in the status, warning, completed, and error. An error indicates that there is a problem with the package. Usually it is caused by a connection issue, like not having access to a flat file or a server. This is an issue that may occur on the machine we're running the migration, but will not occur once a package is moved to the server is going to run on in development or production. A status of completed indicates the package transfer to SSIS with no warnings or errors. If the status is a warning, then warnings will appear on the next page and we need to review those. Most of the time these warnings do not require any repairs. They are just messages to review to ensure your package is doing exactly what you intended it to do. Once all the package migrations have completed, we click the next button. We can click on the warnings and the complete warning will appear below. In some instances, a URL link will appear to take us to a website that offers help on certain warnings or errors. Here we see that the ODBC connection to MySQL was not found. This is because we have not created this connection. Once we create the ODBC connection, the package will run without any issues. Here we see this connection cannot be consolidated because it is a source and destination. This is what we wanted, so no fix is needed. These four information bubbles show us four connections that were all combined into one connection. We can then click on the Validation Summary tab and see the validation warnings. This shows a warning that truncation may occur in this column. Now we can make the determination of whether we need to make changes to the package or leave the package as is because we know that the truncation will not affect this package. Here we see that removing an unused column may increase performance. We can see that the warnings in DTS Exchange will help us optimize our packages by showing us where we can make adjustments to our packages to improve them. If we click on the application log, we will see a detailed list of all the work DTS Exchange has done. Once we are done reviewing this information, we can click View Packages to see our newly created packages in SSIS. Clicking this will open Visual Studio, and the packages we migrated will be in the Solution Explorer on the right. We will now double click on a package and click Run to ensure that the package runs in SSIS. The green indicates that all tasks completed successfully. We have shown how DTS Exchange not only converts your packages to SSIS, it will also add framework to your packages to help you track these packages. We will now go back to DTS Exchange and click Start Again, then Reports. Here you'll see the custom reports we have built into DTS Exchange to give you the tools necessary to monitor your packages. First we'll select the Runtime Trend Report. Here we can see an average runtime for all of your packages that have the auditing framework. We can see the errors and warnings and the percentage of errors and warnings. We can click on the plus next to an individual package and see the time for each task in that package. We can compare that to the past runtimes and determine the trends of our packages. We will now select the Recent Execution Detail Report. Here we can see the most recently run packages and any errors or warnings that occurred in them. This will help in the daily monitoring of the packages. We can then select the Extract Load Trend Report and see the trends of row counts for each of our packages. 
This will help us in tracking changes in our row counts that may indicate a problem. At the top, we have a Purge History button, which will allow us to purge partial or all data from an SSIS Ops database where the auditing framework is storing the package data. We have shown the value that DTS Exchange can bring to your organization based on the time and money it will save you. Converting your DTS packages to SSIS can be a daunting task, but DTS Exchange can bring that task down to size and make your conversion a smooth and painless process.